Hello students, welcome to the session. We are discussing the topic of forensic medicine, legal procedure. So what is the meaning of legal procedure? Legal is related to the law and procedure is the accomplishment or the execution of the law. So there are certain terms and terminologies here. But the basics of legal procedure start from understanding the Indian Penal Code. So what is the Indian Penal Code? It is something which was formulated in 1860 when we were under the colonial rule. Uh, it deals with the substantive criminal law of India. So what is the meaning of substantive criminal law? Uh, it talks about the depth and the volume of the law and order which is written in the country to define crime. Uh, it also defines the offenses which are crimes uh, which are uh, basically against the law which are uh, which require punishment right which is which mandate punishment so there's something called criminal procedure code or crpc which was formulated in 1973 and deals with the procedure of investigation and criminal proceedings so it talks about the mechanism of uh, providing punishment of offenses which is uh, laid down under the ipc uh, which is the substantive criminal law in india so the main difference between ipc and crpc is that uh, when a person commits a crime the police officer would charge him under the section of ipc so the definition of the crime is given under the ipc however the execution or the accomplishment or the means or the medium by which uh, the person would have to follow the punishment or the there's a procedure in which uh, the person uh, would be held under police custody there would be a trial in the court and after the person is either it is proven whether they are guilty or innocent and uh, if they are guilty then they will have to be punished and the procedure for establishing that punishment is what is given under the CRPC. The CRPC lays down the procedure for the establishment of courts uh, based on the hierarchy and the power of courts. We have the Supreme Court, we have the, uh, the district, the, ses the session court, the high court, uh, the powers of judges and magistrates and their sentencing powers. So all this would be defined under the CRPC. The CRPC or the Criminal Procedure Code consolidates uh, the criminal law in the country. Now there is something called Indian Evidence Act of 1872 which deals with the different category of evidences. Now evidence is proof, so there are different categories of evidence There could be uh, verbal or oral evidence, there could be documentary evidence uh, or there could be circumstantial evidence, there could be a testimony. So there are different categories of evidences, all that would be defined, uh, the procedure for collection of the evidence, for preservation of the evidence um, and this is something which is common to both the civil and the criminal law. Right? It, is similar, it is something which is common to civil and criminal procedure. Now what is the criminal law? It deals with those kind of offenses which are against the public interest. So the state is one party which is represented by the public prosecutor and the accused, somebody who is uh, accused of committing a crime would be the other party. So there are two parties, the public prosecutor's party, the other would be the defense lawyer's party. Now there is a civil law, right? we have criminal law, we have civil law. The civil law deals with disputes between two individuals or parties. Now the party or the person who comes and files the complaint in a court of law, they are called the plaintiff and the other one, the party which is accused of committing a crime in both the civil and criminal cases is known as a defendant. Why are they called the defendant? Because they are accused of committing a crime and they would have to defend themselves and they would have to prove themselves that they are uh, whether they are guilty or innocent right so that is the meaning of defendant so we have two parties uh, the plaintiff in case of civil case and we have the defendant in both the civil and criminal cases the accused party would be called a defendant and they would have a defense lawyer who vouches for them and who uh, who would uh, who would present their case in a court of law now what is the meaning of inquest? This is one of the most important uh, aspects of legal procedure or the inquest. So the meaning of inquest is in quasitus, quasitus which means to seek, uh, uh, which means the legal or judicial inquiry to ascertain a matter of fact, so that we are 100% sure that a substance is a matter of fact. It is an inquiry or an investigation into the cause of death. Now we are talking about cases where there is unnatural death or suspicious death which is involved which mandates a process of investigation to unearth the truth. 
right now the difference between inquiry and enquiry is something which students usually ask so i have put it here uh, enquiry is just an informal means to ask a question and inquiry is the formal investigation into the case of death into the uh, in in a case where there is suspicious death or unnatural death to find out the the reason why such a death had taken place that would be inquiry okay and that is conducted in cases of murder where there is suicide involved uh, there could be accidental case of death there could be occupational diseases there could be medical negligence uh, death due to surgery i mean on the surgical table due to anesthesia or uh, you know uh, all those would be the examples where there would be an inquiry or a formal investigation uh, which needs to be conducted now who conducts the inquest and how it is done based on those uh, factors we have types of inquest so there are two basic types of inquest which are conducted in india the first would be the police inquest the second would be the magistrate inquest so we'll talk about those what is the uh, the police inquest is it is defined under the crpc 174 and it is performed throughout india so the officer who is in charge of a police station would inform the executive magistrate now what happens in india is we have uh, we have uh, we have certain areas which come under the jurisdiction of a particular uh, like we have police stations we have magistrates who take care of the law and order of a particular uh, area so that officer in charge of a police station would inform the nearest executive magistrate uh, and the police officer uh, would have to proceed to the place where the deceased body is right because we dealing with a situation where there is suspicious or unnatural death they would have to go visit the place themselves look into where the deceased body is and conduct the entire investigation of the crime scene they would have to scan the whole area they'll have to gather evidence they'll have to talk to people they'll have to talk to witnesses uh, now who's a witness somebody who has perceived the crime somebody who can uh, provide an evidence in a court of law right so there are witnesses so there would be two witnesses who are involved and they would have to uh, uh, sign a report so the police officer would f would make a formal report would have to mention all the details which surround the crime scene and once the report is made depending on what is the circumstances which surrounded the the case of death what kind of wounds were found on the body what was the weapon of uh, with the the weapon which might have produced death and all those so uh, th those once those details are made uh, these this report has to be signed by the police officer and the witnesses who have provided their uh, you know the, the witnesses who have uh, provided evidence and uh, if there is no foul play which is suspected now what is foul play uh, somebody if if there is uh, an instance where the truth is not yet uncovered or there is scope where uh, uh, if there is any sort of foul play like that which is suspected then autopsy would have to be conducted now what is autopsy or post mortem examination is the uh, there would be uh, an autopsy which has to be conducted in the nearest government hospital and uh, once there is no foul play uh, the body is handed over to the relatives an autopsy would be very useful to find out the cause of death and that would make things very clear to us